Hi, I'm Chris Lee, and this is Virtually Speaking. Joining us today is Jeffrey Gittimer, known as the King of Sales, a columnist, a speaker with over 2,500 speeches given worldwide, a consultant and a sales trainer, and a multiple best-selling author of numerous books selling millions of copies worldwide, including the number one selling sales book of all time, The Little Red Book of Selling, and the New York Times bestseller, The Sales Bible, The Little Gold Book of Yes Attitude, and over a dozen and a half more, all of which have been number one bestsellers on Amazon and appeared on over 750 bestseller lists worldwide. His online content has millions of views, hundreds of thousands of subscribers, and his podcast, Sell or Die, has over 1.5 million downloads. Jeffrey has been featured in Time Magazine, Entrepreneur Magazine, Wall Street Journal, and countless more. And I'm very privileged to have him here today with us. So please join me with the legendary Jeffrey Gittimer. Well, hello, Jeffrey Gittimer, and thank you for joining me on Virtually Speaking. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing fine. I'm on the other coast, and uh, we have winter weather here, which is depressing at some point in time, but you get over it. It's always, I always have sunny and 72 in here. The rest is, I don't care. <laughs> Yeah, I know it's I know it's uh, there's a lot of really, really, really cold weather out there and um, we're hearing it all over the country and hopefully everybody stays safe and warm and and they can think of California, have California dreaming going on. Got it. I own the song. You own the song. Well, a copy of it. <laughs> so I'm excited to have you, my friend. I've been looking forward to this. Um, you are, uh, a lot of people know you as the king of sales and the author of uh, lots of great books, including two very well-known books, The Sales Bible and The Little Red yeah. Book of Selling. Yeah. One of my friends said that was the book that set him on his way as a salesman many, many years ago. I have been blessed with thousands of those letters. Yeah. Literally. The book is the, has become the best-selling sales book of all time, The Little Red Book of Selling. And uh, globally, it, it'll never be beaten. I mean, there's just millions of copies globally. That's amazing. Uh, what, is the, what is the difference between that book and the rest? Because I know the rest, there's many, many other bestsellers in there. The sales yeah. Bible is great. And, and you have different colors. You've gone to gold, Every teal, and black. <laughs> Every book that I write is on a specific subject. Right. But the reason the Little Red Book has gone viral the way it has is because it is the only sales book that teaches why people buy rather than how to sell. And that's so much more. If I know why you buy and 20 people come in and give you a sales pitch and they don't know why you buy, you're buying, going to buy from me. Yeah. What's the differentiating factor between that and the sales Bible, which I know is really the other one of the other really big books that you have. The sales Bible is a little bit about everything. OK, so it's kind of all and the rules and all the money. It is. It's a it's a hundred articles that I had written over a period of time that I combined into sections and categories about networking, about closing the sale, about asking the right kind of questions. But the Little Red Book takes the prime subjects deeper so i'm taking humor as an example mm -hmm. which is chapter eight if you can make them laugh you can make them buy right and i talk about how do you engage someone to a point where you know that they're laughing with you not at you right because humor just lowers all those barriers you know you go to a comedy club because you want to laugh but you don't go to a salesman because you want to laugh. No, but it, humor will just take away all the pressure in the room. Yeah. And some people just don't want to laugh. At least Absolutely. I know who they are. I, it tells me a lot about them. <clears throat> Absolutely. So I'm going to lead with a little bit of humor. Yeah. I love that. And, that's... and I'm not going to tell a joke. Because, <laughs> you know, three Dallas Cowboys walk into a bar. Right, right. <laughs> to watch the Super Bowl. And <laughs> but the bottom line is people are looking for help and answers. They don't want a solution. 
They don't want something that's long term. Right. They want to know right. now. Domino's Pizza, we deliver in 30 minutes or it's free. Mm -hmm. That's a great promise. And, and it they worked. did it for years until they ran over somebody and then they don't do it anymore. <laughs> exactly. But, but it worked. It, it built a billion dollar empire. Right. And it's, you know, it's, it's being able to promise uh, also what, you know, you do, but also what they want. You know, you're saying, right. this is what you want. I know what you want. And this is what we do. And that's what you're going to get. And we will follow through on that. So talk a little bit about, um, there's, there's a few topics that I like of yours that um, I think are relevant in sales and, and relevant in um, sales teams. And one of them that I feel like is, is even more important now than ever in the world we're living in is kind of mindset and attitude. Mm -hmm. I know you, you've written books about these and you, mm -hmm. you know, talk about that. So, so where, where are you coming from on, on those things? Well, this is attitude, little gold book of yes, attitude, but attitude is universal. And regardless of what the circumstances are, you still need to have one that's not <laughs> penetrable. You have to have an iron, a cast iron positive attitude or yes attitude. And that takes study. Luckily now, when, when I was learning attitude, the only thing I could do was read books and watch movies. Or maybe if I really had something going on, I had the new technology of a cassette tape. Now there's millions of bites everywhere that anybody can, you know, like Siri, give me something positive attitude. And all of a sudden you're like, okay, do you want the first million or the second million? Right. So there's plenty of resources right now. And the, the late great Jim Rohn said, all the information you need to succeed already exists. The <laughs> problem is you're not exposing yourself to it. Right. And so that challenge is there for anybody. Attitude, I spend an hour every morning for the past 25 years. Read write, prepare, think, create. Those are my five elements to start my day. And I've been doing that every friggin' day. What do you read? For, I read something positive. I read something fun. I read something informational. How do you know? My, my library has 11,000 volumes. So you just pick out something that you may have read before yeah. or you're looking for something. Or something new. Yeah. I also love the story you tell about um i think it was your mentor who said to you that uh hard work begets luck makes luck or yeah. makes luck and work, i i heard work. that years ago i don't know if you're the one who put it out there in one of the books but you know yep. it's absolutely true because um you know if you're passionate about what you're doing and you're working hard and you're mm -hmm. focused on what you're doing opportunities and things are going to happen just as a result of being there right yep woody allen says show up i say show up prepared because if you're not prepared you lose to someone who is <clears throat> so these days um sales managers and and people who are leading sales teams are probably trying to focus on certain aspects that they can improve um of their salespeople. Maybe talk to them about, you know, how to get over the price problem and talk more about value or the, the problem that people have with the fear of rejection. And I know you love to talk about both of these topics. I love rejection. It's like the, it's the greatest thing on the planet. If you don't get rejected. <laughs> you're never going to get the yes. Right. But most people don't learn their own lessons. Most people wake up in the morning and they start with some kind of drink, right. coffee, tea, you name it, oat milk. And um, they do it alone. Like, why would you miss that opportunity? So I'm telling you, if you're in sales, make a morning cup of coffee meeting virtually with a customer. You do that once a day. At the end of a year, you'll have 250 virtual meetings for a cup of coffee if you take two weeks off, which most people do. Yeah. And just Monday through Friday, just work five days a week and have 250 virtual cups of coffee. Now, well, how do I know they're going to show up? That's a good question. Let's 
look at it creatively. I'm going to find out from that guy what his favorite K-cup is. And I'm going to send him a box of K-cups and a mug. And the mug may be something that's appropriate to him because mugs are easy and they're 10 bucks. So I'm going to be sending out mugs five a week. Now, when that guy gets the mug and the K-cups, is he going to just sit on it and not tell anybody or is he going to tell everybody? He's going to tell it. You'll have people by the third month, you'll have people calling you saying, hey, can we have coffee? Mm. And when you say so, K-cup, you mean Keurig, those little cups yeah, you Keurig, put in the, yeah. in, the, in the coffee makers, right? Yeah. So the challenge is what are you doing creatively? Because I know if I send that guy a box of his favorite coffee and a mug, he will be there 100% of the time. But you got to do that 250 times, Jeffrey. How are you going to do that? So what? So what's that worth? What's it cost you? 20 bucks? So it's $100 a week. If you're not willing to invest $100 a week in your success, something's drastically wrong. Mm -hmm. Or you're a cheap bastard. <laughs> and if you're a cheap bastard, this is not going to help you anyway. Because everything you do is going to be measured in nickels. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't think end of the month. I think end of time. Yeah. So I don't you think measure. relationships. Of course. You're always thinking of relationships. And let me take it a little deeper. Once I build the relationship, then I look to build a friendship. Because friendship will, will beat relationship every day. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. And, and you really do talk about the psychology of how you think to yourself about what you're doing as a salesman and also about how to connect with the people that you're doing business with. I'm so if you connect as deep as I can, I'm going right. to connect as deep as I can, as fast as I can. And you did that with me immediately when we met, you immediately could see the kind of guy I was. We had some things in common, not just our haircuts. Yep. And, yep. you know, we, we can talk about what we, what we like, and we both love to do the same thing. And we got along right from the get go. So let me ask you this cool question. You've written a lot of books. We're coming out of, we're in the middle of, we're gonna be in a pandemic forever, who knows? Which book would you say is the most important one for people to look at right now that might help Start them most? Oh, the yes Start attitude. Here. Because if you don't have a good attitude about what's going on, if you're pissing and moaning about, you gotta wear a mask, nobody's there, no one's in their office anymore, I'm gonna die, you're gonna die. Okay, so that's number one. Number two, Learn how to master going live. Ooh, yes. My latest book, and it's all about <clears throat> what do you have to do to look like we look right now? Look how you look. You look very nice. Thank you. Your hair's all combed. Your shirt looks very oh. nice. And well, it is what it is. <laughs> Trimmed. <laughs> so, but but the challenge is, are you comfortable? Yes. Because most people who I, I'm on with clients, I'm going, why are you looking like this? You look like crap. Your laptop is in your lap, not at your eye level. You're, you look like you're, you just woke up. Uh, there's nothing on your wall to make you look any different than anybody else on the planet. There's nothing intriguing about you. And so it's the responsibility of the salesperson to create a look and then a speed of internet. And then comfortable with how you speak. And, and there's 20 things that you need to do different or differently than when you were face-to-face. -face. You yeah. have to be the master of both virtual and face-to-face. -face. It's not an option. Right. And phone. Totally. What's, what is your favorite way to sell or how did you start selling? Well, um, I started pretty young. And I was in my neighborhood. I would go door to door. I was selling candy bars or, you know, uh, when I was in grade school uh, in the seventh and eighth grade, I sold firecrackers that my parents brought me from Florida, <laughs> made a bloody fortune. Um, I sold homework in college. I owned a couple of racehorses when I was in college. What? And I ran football pools for my bookie in college. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's Philly. It's you do things in Philly that you wouldn't do anywhere else. <laughs> yeah. But but the, the bottom line is when I started to sell, 
I had a product that I believed in and I was willing to call anybody and talk to them about it. Mm -hmm. And I sold in New York city mm -hmm. where up yours is a greeting <laughs> and everybody wants a bribe. Make million dollar sales in that environment and you can go anywhere. If you can make it there, you can make it anywhere. Correct. I've heard Paul Anka say that. <laughs> People think it's Frank Sinatra, but it's not. Yeah, well, Sinatra picked out the good songs to to redo for sure. Oh, did he? So did Elvis. Yeah, yeah. That's that's a not a bad way to go as as a musician. Mm -mm. Um, so you know, I, I still want to talk to you a little bit about mindset and kind of one of the okay. things I brought up a moment back there um, that we we didn't really get into yet, which is this fear of rejection uh, that you believe is really not true. Expand on that a little bit and tell me what you're talking about. If you're prepared, you walk in and you're confident that you can help this person and that they're better off having purchased from you. It's a whole different pitch than if you walk in and you go, I don't know, this guy didn't really seem too happy. You know, he gave me five minutes of time, but he's not, he's pretty, his reputation is not good for paying his bills. You walk in with a mindset that's either yes or no. Right. And you construct it yourself. You, you make it happen yourself. Right. So I go into a sale and I believe that guy's, he's in and he has to talk his way out of it. That's how I walk into a sales call. Mm. And I've, I have literally, Chris, I've gone into Fortune 500 company CEOs and said, you want to buy now or you want to hear the pitch? <laughs> I like that. Because they already, why am I in their office? Yeah, they've done some research already. Exactly. <clears throat> so and the fear they, say, well, they say, well, Jeffrey, we're probably going to do something. I say, great, let's go eat. Yeah, I love that. Well, but I think that the fear of rejection, isn't it also that um, people are afraid that the person's going to say no and they're not going to be able to handle all of the no's they're going to get? Correct. That, that's called unprepared. Okay. Explain okay, so that. let's talk about our business. Let's talk about the speaking business. Sure. Oh, speakers people hear go, no all the time. No, I, I get no, I get so nervous before I give a speech. Why? I've given 2,500 speeches and never been nervous. Well, that's never. you, but that's just you. No, no, I'm prepared. Ah, prepared. The average speaker is unprepared. No, but what I'm saying, what I'm saying is, is that people are afraid of the rejection because it hurts, because they, they can't get the motivation up once they've heard a hundred no's, you know, and I, 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 I think about the speakers a lot because I know that you know, and I don't like to place holds with speakers unless this client has told me right. we this really like that work. speaker and we want that hold because this guy's on our very short list. There's people out there who will place holds just because they recommend you, which is silly. But the, the speakers, I think, um, have to be quite resilient. And I've noticed that 90 some odd percent of them are very resilient because they realize Chris is great. Whoever is out there selling me is great. I'm great. People are going to say yes and people are going to say no. But I bet you there's some speakers. And I and I think that if you're a speaker, you're probably a more resilient, positive person just to begin with. But I think yes. in any game, when you have a lot of no's, when you have a lot of rejection, going door to door must be a nightmare. I, I've never done oh. that. I, I did that oh, when I was a kid like you were selling candy. But, you know, I was trying to win a contest and I was a cute little smiley kid in my exactly. neighborhood yeah so let me address these two things number right. one is um the rejection and number two is the objection sure your price is too high there's one universal answer for objections that works to completely throw the other person off guard chris your price is too high oh chris i was hoping you would say that because our best customers always come from people that think we're too expensive. And it's my fault that I haven't explained our value. So let me go back just a little bit. Okay, you got where I'm going? Yeah, you're okay. really defining, you're just coming out and saying you're defining that the value is what you, we need to focus on here. Correct. Now, let's talk about rejection and rejection. 
I'm not interested. I go, oh, great. You're not interested. You know, it usually takes me four not interested before I can get to one interested. And you are only my second not interested today. <laughs> Do you know somebody else that might not be interested? In? <laughs> well, really, it's just saying to yourself, you know that you're going to get rejections. I'm going to have fun at it. It's normal. I'm going to have fun at it. It's not everybody can say yes to everything, you know. Right. Get it. I love I love what you just said there, though. So um, was there a turning point in your career when you realized you were really, really good and you realized that you were onto something and you needed to write these books and you were the best? Or was it always in you, like probably with Tom Brady being picked in the sixth round and wanting to go out there with a chip Not on Karen. his shoulder? Right. And he just wanted to always prove everybody wrong. But what was it about you? No. That you realized, what happened? Was there a turning point? Here's a, here's a statement. You don't get great at sales in a day. You get great at sales day by day. Yeah, you've taught that anybody it can learn it and it's not something you're yeah. born with, right? So for me, I learned it day by day in Manhattan for years. And then I read an article, and but you have to look for opportunities because if you don't see the opportunity, you you just end up with the chip on your shoulder and you're pissed off your whole life so a column came out in the charlotte observer where the sales guru guy answered questions yeah he posed them one week and then answered them the next week and i i read the paper and i go this guy's full of shit he has no idea what he's talking about so i call the paper and i say you know you're so stupid you bought this guy's answers, and now thousands of your readers wow. have the wrong answers. Oof. The guy comes over. The next Monday, my column was in the paper about what I think. My phone is ringing off the hook. And then I go, wait, there's an opportunity here. This guy's a shitty writer. I'm a better writer than he is, and I don't do it for a living. So I go to the paper, and I say, hey, let me write a column on sales. And I got rejected. Big time. You're going to do this and we don't do that. Okay. So I leave and I go around the corner to the business journal <laughs> where I've been selling them sales leads. The guy meets me literally in the middle of the street, crossing the street. Tell me there's no God. And he says, what were you doing in the observer? Ah. <laughs> I saw they, he went, you know, they already read their competitor's paper. He said, do you have time for a cup of coffee? I go, sure. So I tell him the story and he goes, you know, 30% of our readers are in sales and we don't do anything for them. I said, why don't I write a column every week on selling skills? As we're talking, Chris, the people who rejected me walk by our booth. <laughs> That's there is great. a God. There is a, there is a God. Okay. And they knew who you were sitting I go with. To this guy's office. I go to this guy's office. And we strike a deal and I spin around to walk out of the office and he, he yells at me, by the way, can you write? Like, <laughs> we'll see. But he, it was based on his trust in me. Yeah. Not on my writing skills. Well, he could tell that you were really smart and he loved your charisma and your confidence. Right. And that's how he knew. But see, that's the other thing is it takes one. It's not that it takes one to know one, but you know, my kind of, theory and mantra that I've, you know, had being selling on the phone for over a quarter century is that, you know, my style and my truth and my passion for what I do is going to come through um, every different, time, every time, but some people yeah. are going to like it. Some people aren't, some people are going to recognize it as great and that's who they want to work with and simply are not. So the people who recognize me for who I am and who appreciate me and see who I am as a talented caring, authentic, smart yep. person, they want to work with me. That's all that matters. It, you cannot please everyone. And the people who don't recognize you as being great or good for them aren't the people for you anyway. So it's, it's, you know, it's kind of like dating. Like you don't want to be with the girl who doesn't want to be with you. 5% of your customers are 95% of your problems. And you already know who they are. Wow. I like that. And and you should have never done business with them in the first place because they're paying the ass of their cheap bastards. <laughs> and, and you look at yourself and you go, okay, not only do the people who like you will do business with you, they'll do business with you for a decade. Right. And they're not going to 
hammer you for little nickels and dimes. You know, it's funny. You can have people say to you, thank you for being so persistent and thank you for being so communicative and staying on top of me and, and keeping in touch where the, the exact same stuff that you're doing with that guy, somebody else doesn't like it. And somebody else is not, is, is, doesn't work that way. And that's fine. Nothing you can do about it. Right. So they're entitled I, to their wrong opinion. Exactly. So I, um, you know, have heard a lot of people talk about sales. I've been in sales. I love it. It's, it's what we do. So this is a question I want to ask you. Is there a sale, a particular sale? And I know you've made great sales recently and we don't have to go, uh, you know, uh, back, you know, decades and decades, but you know, it doesn't really matter to me what your best sale was. I have a couple moments where something really cool happened, like that one you just talked about uh, mm -hmm. with the two with the two journals and the two business journals and um, how you ended up making the deal with the other one. But is there one that really sticks out to you that's just kind of like this shining star, amazing deal that happened only because of what you did and, and it's something you'll yeah. never forget? A Fortune 500 company has a big program. Unbeknownst to me, they invite eight people to give them a pitch. They reject them all. I get a call saying, we're going to invite three more people. Would you like to come? I go, sure, I'll show up. And I show up and I give my talk to them. And I win. What were you selling? I was selling customer loyalty training. Okay. Not customer satisfaction. There's a difference. I threw all that shit out the window. You know, I, I asked, you know what I asked the group? Would you rather your spouse be satisfied or loyal? <laughs> if you and had to choose. Down, these are Fortune 500 company people. And so we get in the room where we're going to talk about money. And I said, before we start anything, I want to know why you picked me. And the answer was, because you weren't buttoned down. What does that mean? You were yourself. Mm. You weren't full of shit and full of a, you know, full of a, a corporate pitch and 28 slides. I had no slides. Right. I just talked to them about what they wanted and told them that not only could I do it, but I'd also do this. Not only would this happen, but this would happen. Mm. You're not going to, you're not going to uh, get new customers only. You're going to retain existing customers. Mm -hmm. Oh, cool. I said, how much does one lost customer co cost you? So I'm asking them questions that they didn't even know the answer to. So if they don't know, I go, you know what? Not only do you not know, you don't want to know. And they say, well, our churn factor. I said, hold on one second. Let's talk about churn for a second. Churn, my definition is management's inability to keep customers loyal. Right. And they're like, okay. <laughs> but I, I give them facts that they may be uncomfortable with, but they're challenging facts that they want to take advantage of and win with. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't just tell them they're doing something wrong. I tell right. them, here's the opportunity to get it better. Yeah. Love that. What is the thing that most of the clients in the last couple of years during the pandemic have been asking you to solve or discuss or focus on when you're giving presentations? What's kind of the thing you're hearing? Is there something that's consistent? Yes. Most people want to do better virtual talk. Okay. And I say, look, here's the deal with virtual. When you see your people and they look like crap, <laughs> that's what they look like when they're going in front of a customer. Wow. Whether they're face to face or virtual, they don't, they're, they're sloppy. They don't look good. They don't look like they're ready. So I'm going to get them ready virtually, which will automatically get them ready when they go face to face. So dive deeper into the look because, you know, does that mean they weren't wearing a suit and tie or they're... Now, what, what do you mean by they were, that? They were, they thought, well, I'm online. I'm okay. Like I got this zoom thing down. Thank God the guy can see me. And then they go, oh, wait, he can see me. 
<laughs> right. So I tell everyone to take a picture of themselves and they ask, is this who you want to have a conversation with? And if it didn't fix it. So I give them specific things that they can do and specific things that they can ask. Okay. So it's but not just about, it's like not this. just about appearance. It's about also, and you're Style. saying ask, not say yeah. ask. Yeah. I'm a proponent of ask before tell. Okay. I like that. Because what do you care about me if it's not affecting you the right way? And I'm going right. to ask you questions to start out innocuously, like, where did you grow up? But I'm going to end up by saying, what's the best part about your job? What do you love about this? And if you could make anything go away except me, what would you, what would, what would you know what I mean? <laughs> so I'm going to, Chris, I'm going to make them laugh. Right. And so hard. That, I think that's more scary maybe than anything. For people it's the fear of rejection is one thing but asking somebody to make somebody else laugh i mean you have to take a huge risk in yes. order to make somebody laugh yes however there's a new thing out it's called read there's books on humor yeah there's speakers on humor totally and judy some carter is one of them what's yeah. that mm -hmm. some are actually funny <laughs> but i made it my business to learn humor from my peers are we going to get to see any of that soon or just kidding i don't know as soon as you <laughs> <laughs> let me do the jokes okay so um the the challenge that anybody has is what are they doing that can move that needle move their needle not yours yeah and it, it comes with conversation it comes with being relaxed it comes with being prepared it comes with showing that you that you give a shit and your humanity comes through every time and like every you, single time and like you said before being really confident and being in the belief in your product in your company that it really is the best if you don't believe that go someplace where you can believe that right because that, that's going to show up immediately yeah second best in sales is first loser mm -hmm. there's no ribbon there's nope. no participation trophy. It's that's what I named our, our podcast sell or die. I love it. That's what it is. And you have over um, 1.5 million downloads on your podcast. I've, I've yeah. heard. Okay. So let me throw this at you. Okay. The one thing that I bank myself on is consistency. Yeah. So we, we have 500, and some podcasts, but we do them every week. We have, I've been on Facebook Live every day since the pandemic started. I'm now like 650 days, straight days, doing a, a little sales talk at 9.59 in the morning. People from all over the world show up every day, every day, because they want that kick in the ass. Right. I'm gonna be giving a, a three-day talk in Charlotte uh, in March, and people can go to Gittimer.com and find it. But people are going to come in from all over the world. They've been waiting for this. That's so awesome. Three days, kick butt, eat food, have a good time, and then take my upsell, please. <laughs> so, um, you know, as we come towards the end here, I, I think that you just said something that reminded me of something else that you say. Um, but you said they wanted you to give them a kick in the butt to start the day. But yeah. how do we give a kick to ourselves in the butt every day? How do we kick our own butts? Okay. So <laughs> this is so, I, I love your questions. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Chapter one in the 12.5 chapters of Little Red Book of Selling is kick your own ass. That's chapter one. Yeah. Because I can't come to your house every day and go, come on, Chris, you can get up. You can do it, <laughs> bud. It's all you. You have to have the internal belief and love of what you do in order to get up and do it and desire to make money belief, is desire huh? to make money part of it yeah but it's not really that can't be the prime motivator right the desire to help has to supersede the desire to make money you help enough people you make a ton of money right i love that yeah. and, and so that i've always been 
desire to make money is lower on the totem pole for me. But I, I, I interrupted I, you. I, so, so to kick our okay. own butts or our own ass, as you say, what is it that is the way for us to go through that? Hopefully now or in the morning or anytime. You love what you do. You believe that what you do will help other people. And you strive to help those people to own what it is that you sell. And you do it consistently and you concentrate on, you know, the mindset is the new word. It used to be focus. Mm. But before that, it was concentration. <laughs> and if you concentrate on what it is that you're looking for, you concentrate on what it is that you're trying to do to help other people, it'll automatically come into clear view. So I'm looking to be able to make certain that the people that I talk to and people that I help have that mindset of, I love what I'm doing, I'm helping other people, and I believe they're better off having purchased from me. If I believe that, I'm gonna win. Yeah. Every time I'm gonna win. That's amazing, Jeffrey. You are always inspirational, you're always fun. You really have helped countless millions of people get better at this. Yeah over the years yeah. and you're a living legend in this world. So it has been such a privilege to connect with you and then have you on the show finally today. Thanks so much for doing it, my friend. My pleasure, Chris.